You're listening to the Classic Gamers Guild Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Classic Gamers Guild Podcast. I'm your host, Anna. I'm here with Paul, and today we are talking about one of the most beautiful games, in my opinion, out of all of the Sierra games out there. Uh, would you agree? Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Good. So we're both on the same page. That's a good start. Uh, tonight we are talking about uh, Roberta Williams' The Dagger of Amon Ra, although I guess we'll get into more than just Roberta's involved in this game. So that's kind of interesting. But uh, yeah, beautiful game, beautiful box. Uh, I don't think I could say enough good things about it. Yeah, no, it's an amazing game. And there's like, there's like seven different ways to say it. You, you could be like mm -hmm. Lara Bo in Dagger of Amon Ra, Lara Bo 2 Dagger of Amon It's yeah, there's, there's a lot of doesn't doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's yeah, it's a gorgeous game. And it's a lot of fun. And it's very different than the first Laura Bow installment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, both of them give you a bit of a notebook. But uh, this one actually lets you ask questions from the notebook instead of just using it as a reference point to base your game off of. Yeah, yeah that's a really good way to put it. You sound shockingly prepared to talk about this today. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's, you know, it, it's a game that really, really worked well in the point and click format, actually. Uh, not every game was I happy with the Switch, but in, in this particular case, I thought it was a beautiful follow up, even though they entirely changed the format and, and I mean, in some ways changed the character, you know, her looks and stuff. I mean, they had to, she's hand painted now. Yeah, they, they had they had several more colors to work with. But and I, I guess I shouldn't say it's very different because it's it's really not. I mean, at the heart, it's it's kind of the same, but it's visually very different, right? Like it's a lot brighter of a game, like a lot mm -hmm. brighter of a palette. It, it's um, it it takes place half not half, but the beginnings in the daytime, and then the the rest of the games in the museum, which is like well lit. Whereas like Colonel's mm -hmm. Quest is just like a really dark, a visually dark game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wonder how much that had to do with the different people involved in each game. So uh, each of them are listed as being a Roberta Williams game. But just from my research here and there, it appears that maybe she was much more involved in the first one than in the second one. Yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I guess uh, her name's her name is kind of almost gratuitously on on the second one in the sense that you know it's it's her it's her franchise obviously her company but but really i don't think she had much to do if anything with with the sequel mhm mm yeah I, I i keep seeing uh information about uh bruce balfour doing a lot of the work and and he did a whole bunch of other games uh, wasteland not but the least of them and uh and so many other things and all of a sudden here he is he pops up and does this little contract job with sierra and he's working with josh mandel and laura lee shannon laura lee shannon and uh all of a sudden you have this like wild team creating this really uh a game that is unlike a lot of the other games out there i don't i don't think i've encountered anything quite like this it's it's funny it's educational it's shocking it's scary it's eerie again educational i'm going to throw that in twice because my goodness if they could cram a quote or a little tidbit of information out there you, you'd think it was gold rush for all that they're trying to teach you <laughs> yeah no it really is they did a really good job of of making the game feel like it was in the roaring twenties as it was depicted as being. Cause there's, there's a lot of just not, not even ham fisted, just a lot of nice, like subtle ways of letting you know that like there's, um, I think there's something on the bulletin board at where she works, where it says native Americans uh, have gained citizenship and the dates like it, it's correct as in 1924, mm -hmm. whatever the actual date was. But yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff like that. Um, and, and there's a lot of kind of controversy around this game, even at the time. Which mm -hmm. says a lot because this is you know pre pre not pre internet but pre Twitter anyway and um, it's it took a little more to get people whipped up when this game came out and it's it managed to accomplish that but we can we can get into the the controversies a little bit later in the show but um, yeah that was kind of fun but yeah like you said it was it was Bruce Balfour's project I know he's uh, what well, I assume as he should be quite proud of it because it's awesome um, Josh Mandel mm -hmm. co wrote it Josh Mandel 
Josh Mandel did Space Quest VI and Freddie Farkas, among other things. Um, he co-wrote it with Lorelai Shannon, who did King's mm-hmm. Quest VII, and one of my favorite Sierra games, Phantasmagoria II, A Puzzle of Flesh. Mm, yeah. Wow, that, that game's so good. Love that game. Um, and she's such a lovely woman, too. But um, yeah, mm-hmm. they did an awesome job, because you've got Lorelai's um, I'm going to assume it's Lorelai's kind of darkness. That's sort of her thing is more the horror genre um, because the, the game's quite dark. It was the, the first, the first Sierra game to depict um, the first Roberta Williams game to depict blood. Um, mm-hmm. And, and it's, yeah, it's quite, even the, the flavor text, the descriptions for the corpses and stuff, it gets, it gets pretty gross, <laughs> pretty dark and pretty awesome. <laughs> um, but then you've got Josh Mandel handling what I would assume a lot of it maybe in the flavor text because there's a lot of just really take you by surprise, funny um, comments to things. Yeah, exactly. It's like all of a sudden I'm getting a joke about the Ziggy comic just because of reference to one of the characters. I'm like, what's that doing there? Oh, that's nice. You know, just little things to make me laugh. (laughs) Yeah, no, it's, it's amazing. Like I, I, you know, I, I ranked this game in, in like my top three or five kind of all time. Uh, before mm-hmm. replaying it for this episode and, and after playing it again, I, I stand by that. Like it is, it's just, mm-hmm. it's so good. It's cathartic it, it, as a Sierra fan, it's cathartic, but it's, it's just great. It's hard. It's also a little frustrating at times, but it's like mm-hmm. that perfect balance of reward. You know, you feel if you stick with it, you feel really rewarded. And um, yeah, so I, I guess going forward, we should probably just say now there's like heavy spoilers ahead um oh, so yeah. <laughs> that, you know there, there you go we, we, we you've had it's you've fair. had 30 years yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah hey, what big spoiler here if you go to cross the road and you've completely forgotten how the game works you're gonna get killed and then it take a little while to remember how to look both ways to cross the street. you know <laughs> you'd think this would be a simple thing and i'm just like where do you have to look because i'm trying to look on the left and the right side of her head you just have to look at each side of the screen like it's totally logical when you get down to it and you can even do it as soon as you leave a building so that you don't have to do it at the edge of the street or whatever you just need to look while you're on the screen and the the amazing intelligence the game knows but if it doesn't you get like a flying smuck and you end up rolling over on the sidewalk which is also pretty fantastic yeah i had no idea that you could cross the street if you look both ways that that's that's that much cooler that they, they took it that far that's awesome <laughs> I, we, we have a, we have a message group, just, just you, you, myself and Rick, you know, for, for the show. And I'd written you guys after playing just 20 minutes of it. And I sent you guys a screen capture of getting hit by the car. And I was like, the last game I really played was, was Sam and Max. And, and I just got to say, it feels good to be home again. Cause <laughs> just getting tucked into a Sierra game, trying to cross the street and getting mercilessly run over in a cartoonish death was just, I'm home. This is, this is what I, this exactly. is what I love. Oh, it's great. You know, and in like I ran into what I, I think was a, a very early unwinnable situation. And maybe I'm just not understanding how to proceed. But when I went back to the uh, sandwich vendor to get a sandwich for the cop, uh, I gave him the coupon and he's like, oh, that's great. Here's your sub. That's fine. I'm going to go broke now, but whatever. And I accidentally clicked away from the sub and the sub disappeared. But I didn't have any way to re-engage the uh, conversation. Because oh, I didn't have another ticket. And he'd already given it to me. So explanation mark, fine. Well, question mark, fine. You can ask him about your stuff. But it, how do you re-engage the sandwich? I couldn't. So I'd, I had to go back. And luckily, I saved just a minute earlier because I'm a Sierra gamer. But still, I'm like, well, that's silly. I guess you have to be either really careful to it or I'm entirely missing a concept. <laughs> no, I, th- I, I think you're innocent there because the the and this is a good thing to mention too. If you were about to tune out because of spoilers, which I, I kind of doubt anybody would at this point, but but there <laughs> the, there is one unwinnable state in this game, one Walking Dead scenario, you know, whatever, um, and that's well, formally I knew it as if you ate the sandwich. Um, so <laughs> I, I guess either way, it revolves around the sandwich. But I, I didn't know really? that. You could- <laughs> yeah, that, that you could, you know, fumble and click the wrong thing at the wrong time. and lose. So just, buddy, be careful with the sandwich. Yeah. Just, you know, save it yeah. before you give the guy the coupon. But if you haven't played it yet, just know that's the only, uh, you know, Dick Sierra move in the game <laughs> is, is, is if you eat yeah. the sandwich, you're done. You can't get another coupon to get another sandwich. So, but other than that, you're yeah. fine. You'll be all right. I mean, you're going to yeah. die a lot, but but you're not going to be in an unwinnable state. 
No, and you can miss stuff, and it's fine. It actually, like, this game expects you not to catch every piece of evidence and to figure out exactly who did what and how the first time around. You're expected to get kind of a meh ending, which is great because it gives a variety, which we'll talk about later. Uh, but it, it, uh, it's okay, right? Yeah. I mean, because it, it lets you click through. You don't have to rewatch everything. And if you kind of get the gist of what's going on, you're like, oh, man, I just missed this, this, and this. And you play through again. It's going to take you like a third of the time anyways, if you're just doing it a second time right away. And then the next time, if you do it again in this day and age, oh, my God, it would be even a third of that because it's just it's it's quick that way. But you want to get it all, right? So. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I, I guess to, to a lot of listeners who are more LucasArts centric, I would still encourage them to play specifically this game. Um, like I know when I'm making suggestions to people uh, like a LucasArts players specifically who kind of just didn't grow up on Sierra, but they're they dabbling, like they want to try it. They don't know where to start. I usually say, you know, Space Quest, Gabriel Knight or, or Larbo 2. And and I stand by that because it's at the heart of this game. It's just it's just an awesome, really well done murder mystery. And I'd, I'd, mm -hmm. you'd be hard pressed to find somebody that doesn't like a really good murder mystery, right? There's so much fun, mm -hmm. and it's probably among the the best topics for uh, the best genre, uh, not genre, but the yeah, I'll just stick with topics. I don't know the right word. It's one of the best mm -hmm. stories you could tell in an adventure game because the the genre lends itself brilliantly to to a murder mystery because there's you know the you could take physical notes on your own if you want to but otherwise the game has a notebook for you and it just lends itself really well the genre of adventure to to murder mysteries and the game the game pulls that off really really well so um mm -hmm. last chance for spoilers um and i will say too if, if you're going to continue listening and you haven't played it there's the, one of the i think brilliant parts about this game and here we go this is like just ripping the bandit off full spoiler right now there there is no one bad person the, you know there mm -hmm. isn't like the the one bad guy or girl who d done the thing um it, it's kind of complex and and you you learn as you go along that there's a lot of weird relationship stuff going on a lot of ins a lot of outs very complicated but it's mm -hmm. it's not like you know the, i i can say so and so did the thing did the murder mm -hmm. and and that ruins it because it's it's not that simple <laughs> No, exactly. Like who and when and how and why and answer all of it like it's a test and have you been paying attention? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, very much so. <laughs> yeah, no, but just, you yeah, know, a bunch of bunch of crazy stuff starts happening. It gets to the point where, where you kind of, you're, you're, the goalpost changes in the sense that like you, you're not, you, at some point you become much less concerned with who even stole the dagger because mm -hmm. there's just, just, just bodies just piling up. Um, and how, how and Lara it, it, isn't detained because she keeps finding them first. I'll never know, but <laughs> I know. And, and here she is sticking fingerprints all, all over everything. And she doesn't even need yeah. to, and she's still not getting into trouble. And you know what? These bodies are great. It's not just, Oh my God, there's a body. It's like, now look at it, search it, check it out, check out different aspects of it. Like, yeah. no, let's use a magnifying glass on this body and really, really think about the death. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that yeah, is and, so cool. <laughs> and just one of my favorite things of Sierra games that, that that LucasArts and all the other ones did also, which would be you know flavor text descriptions for for unimportant or mundane things. They all did it, but I, I do think Sierra just pay, paid a little more attention to them. They had more of them, let's just say, than than the other companies. And this game's a great example of it because they, they don't cheap out. So like if you're looking at the first body you find, Pip and Carter in 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 the mm -hmm. um, sarcophagus. If you if you poke his eye, the game knows mm -hmm. you poked his eye. If you poke his ear, the game has a response for poking his ear. Um, if you poke <laughs> his tongue, they, the game will tell you his mouth is dry and his tongue is cold. Like it's it's really cool. <laughs> like it, it, they they've covered every base as far as that kind of stuff. Yeah, and all the way through. I mean, everything about this game is so satisfying from from the deaths to discover to the discoveries to the ending. Even if you get a bad ending, it's like, you know, when you're watching a show and everything's over and it flashes up on the screen, a photo of somebody in the show and they've done something and you want to know what turned out 20 years later, you know, blah, 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 lives on the beach and yeah, ended up yeah. with three wives, right? Like this game gives you all of that all wrapped up in a satisfying experience that you have control of as Laura Bow. It's fantastic. Yeah, that's such a great point because if... if if you're going to play the game and 
you know, you've only got time to play it once. You're going to get the ending you get and, and that's it. Like we totally mm-hmm. get that. Uh, that being said, it, at least jump on YouTube afterwards and look at the different endings because what mm-hmm. I really appreciated was what you just described, the the whole VH1 behind the music. Where are they now? <laughs> it's really cool because like um, for, I think it's Vivian Delacroix, her, it says, you know, she, this, in the bad ending, it says that she died and a, a statue was made of her and put in the museum and the artist, yes. uh, the artist is credited <laughs> as unknown artist because you didn't <laughs> solve her murder. So you don't know who killed her, but if you solve yeah. the murder and get the good ending, it tells you who the artist was and it all fits. <laughs> so it's just little tiny, tiny attention to detail like that. That's just incredible. Yeah, and they don't even act like it's creepy. They're like, nope, this person's died and you can go visit them. This is how they're displayed. <laughs> like, yeah. It's so worth it. Yeah, and it's, it's, so I guess the the overall plot, I guess if you if you haven't played it, is you pick up as Laura Bow. She gets a job in, in, in New York City um, uh, by by her father who kind of recommends her for, for the, the publication. I'm not sure if it's like, you know, Times. It's just generic New York newspaper mm-hmm. that she works for, big big time stuff. Um, and she gets given yeah. this job. And yeah, so you, you, you have to kind of go around town. I think the main goal before you get to the museum is really just to find a dress. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much what it comes down to. <laughs> and they're, they're, they're uncharacteristically Sierra, but uh, like they don't come across very Sierra like that because they're they're really – they really hammer that home to the point where like, if you go to the museum ahead of time, there's a giant mm-hmm. banner on, on the museum that says, you know, social gathering tonight, blah, 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 formal attire required. Like it says mm-hmm. it really big on the museum. Like, you know, I, I, I get it. Like you, you we need to find clothes. <laughs> it's, it's kind of weird. That, that kind of stuff. Well, they, they me, incorporate but. it into the storyline later on, right? When your, your handsome fella shows up and, and he's got his tux on, but he's got the, uh, his work boots, right? And he's right. like, yeah. oh, yes, yeah, so, no, the, I saw the fancy dress required. So look at, we each had to go to a lot of trouble to get our clothing, didn't we? Ha, 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 ha. Ah, you know what? I actually didn't put that together. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> which, which, which makes your mocking laughter feel directed at me. <laughs> 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 I, was, I was actually laughing because how early in the game they kissed i'm just like wow you're really yeah. going for it it's like she meets him and within seconds she's like wow he's hot do you want to come to this thing and he's like oh yeah like i'm connected anyways i'm in and as soon as he gets there he's like oh yeah i like spent everything i had on this tuxedo so that i could meet you here but you know let's let's talk and it actually kind of things hinge on on what happens later on too when he's around you can really mess stuff up with this guy if you don't do it right at the end kiss or no kiss <laughs> yeah 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 you can you can straight just blame him for everything which is a good time yeah <laughs> <laughs> well that's what you want to do everybody wants to do that right that's a, yeah that's a yeah. thing mm-hmm. yeah well it's funny because I, I have a very short list of critiques it's really just that and one other thing that i'm not even going to open the box on yet because i don't want to start ranting too soon but oh, but of, of course of, i am <laughs> of my two critiques, the, the the one other critique was was that kiss because it it's it, mm-hmm. it doesn't it doesn't even fit the way she's responding to him. Like she's very believable no. and and ladylike. Like, well, I'm not really sure, but you know, I guess you did go through a lot of trouble to to be here just to see me. So yeah, I guess I can agree to dinner. Bam, tongues in each other's throat. <laughs> like whoa, it, it's just <laughs> and it's just way too soon. Like like they were they yeah. for some reason they just gotten like a a crazy rush to like make them in love out of nowhere. And it's like the writing up until that point was really good. It was like pacing it lovely. And then they, for some reason they kiss and even the kiss is like, like two and a half seconds long. It's just a weird thing that should have been cut. (laughs) It's funny too, because it's not till he meets you later and he's like, Oh, sorry, I didn't really explain to you who I was or what I did. So I'll tell you that now. And you're like, no, no, we were too busy making out for you to give me that information. Clearly. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, yeah, kiss wasn't. But, you know, he was like, we, cute, we get so. it. Yeah, I was just gonna say it's like we get it. He's the cute guy. He's the only guy your age, and you're both redheads. Like we know it's gonna mm-hmm. happen. Just just pace yourself. 
Mm-hmm. Well, this this game actually offers up a lot of information really early on. Like even right at the beginning, y- you have to ask everybody about everything, and it's a little bit tedious once once you have like two and a half pages worth of entries in your little notebook about people. But as long as you're doing that, essentially, Mister uh, Low Fat, who I'm sure we can complain about later in this episode, will tell you the lowdown on just about everybody. He kind of tells you who's a little bit shady and what's going on. He he's really kind of giving you the answer to everything that's going on. That's a good point. Yeah. He's, he's surprisingly gossipy, almost bitchy (laughs) in a fun way. You know, (laughs) you know, let's just throw purses in the center and just, you know, (laughs) yeah. And one of the, I mean, every single character in this, and I think it's been brought up before by multiple people pushing up roses and others. They're all just a stereotype of who they are. Like whatever character they are, if they're Irish, they're going to be really Irish. If they're, uh, a certain other characteristic or heritage, no matter who's playing them, they're just, they're really going to be that uh, characteristic or heritage. <laughs> yeah. It, okay. So I, I'd say I let it happen naturally. That, that brings me to my other critique, which is related to more really specifically just the voice act, the talky version of it, because mm-hmm. I, I had previously played the, the non talky, the floppy version two or three or four times bef- before this mm-hmm. week. And, and mm-hmm. I've always loved it. And I never noticed what I'm about to say. And, and I finally noticed it upon playing the talkie version, which is what you just brought up, which is the, the outlandish stereotype things. And it's, it's too much. It's like mm-hmm. every character has a weird, quirky, different thing about them. Like, like, the, you know what I mean? There's, there's the, the French girl and then there, there's the Egyptian guy. And then they're like, Oh, well, there's a second Egyptian guy. And they're like, yeah, that, you know, now everyone's got to be different. So the second Egyptian guy has a lisp. And, and, then, you know, and then, then there's, it's just, it's the, the super Irish guy, the, 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 the low fat guy. I mean, e- even Laura herself with the over the top New Orleans thing. It's just, it's a bit mm-hmm. like the game almost deserved a little better than that. Cause it comes across as kind of cheap slash jokey. And, and the writing is better than that. Like it's really without, mm-hmm. and without hearing the decent voice acting, I mean, considering they're mm-hmm. all Sierra employees and they're not professional voice actors, it's pretty good. But judging it just on straight voice acting, forgetting the circumstances, it's it's not very good. Um, mm-hmm. That also highlights it, right? Because it's like you've got, you know, like Josh Mandel doing doing Irish and, and doing mm-hmm. um, you know a couple of different voices. They they do him with like a, a serious detuner for for uh, for Steve, where he's all for, you know, yeah, super yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, they changed around. Uh, it's yeah I, I I was like well I'm gonna play the disc version I played the disc version I'm like okay well I'm gonna compare it to the voice version so I do the GOG and I'm checking out the voice version and God I left it on for like I didn't even make it through the newsroom I was just like I'm yeah. sorry no yeah I just because it's just I don't know I've never played that version of the game and I was like it's and it's not just like I can't judge the whole game on its voice acting on the first few seconds. I'm not that much of a bitch, but I'm just like, I how much bloody time do I have right now? I'm already I'm going to play this game a few times. I'm going to spend some time with it. I'm really going to get to know it, and I already kind of know what they're going to say. So I guess you know the best thing I could really do if I was being conscientious, conscientious is if I met a new character, I could turn it on, listen to what they sound like and turn it back off again if I felt I needed to. But I guess I'm not there yet. I'll save that for another day. Yeah, no, that's and that's a good angle too, just just to get the, the idea of, of what they're going for in their head. Because otherwise, you know, uh, uh, God, I've been playing this a lot for the last four days and I can't think of the name of the character, but the one with the lisp who um, Richard Aronson voiced, who he just recently had on the show, um, mm-hmm. his, his, his text can almost be a little confusing until you hear what they're going for. Um, right, but it's yeah. just again, it's, yeah. it's over the top. It's like they they snuck a, a th a, a lisp into like every word, and it was just <laughs> it, it was just it was all just a bit much. Like I kind of wish it was just you know just just normal people with with normal accents, let's say, and and maybe of course like the French girl or the guy from Egypt. But like mm-hmm. everyone had to have a weird. They all had like a signature thing about the way they talked, and it made it. Yeah, there was that German, right, Mister. Oh, right. yeah, there. He exactly. was he had that one mon- he everything had to have that German kind of a sound going to it. And I think I think that was Josh Mandel, that one. But yeah, it was uh it was very stereotypical. 
Yeah, I, I will say the German guy has has some of the funniest lines. He 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 made me crack up <laughs> it, it, a couple of times. I, I can't. There was two of them that made me laugh out loud, literally, as opposed to like you know typing LOL. Mm -hmm. And you know, none of us none of us are laughing when we type that. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's pretty rare. Um, but but yeah. he's one of them was when he's asking Laura to leave the gift shop, and he's like, "If you don't leave, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to even try." He's like, "If you don't leave the gift shop now, I'm going to be forced to injure you." And it just comes out of nowhere. <laughs> You're like, "Jesus Christ!" It's just like, "Oh, little... buddy." <laughs> a bit much but um anyway since i just critiqued some of the voice acting specifically josh's i do have to say that josh mandel does does my favorite voice acting in any game i think i've ever heard in this which is yeah. rocco the cab driver and it yeah. is it is just the it, it just puts a, a smile a, a big smile on my my big old jewish face because he just rocks the best bernie sanders new york jew that you've ever heard. I mean, it's if you're if you're trying to wonder, what, I guess what I'm saying is, just imagine Bernie Sanders because he's he pretty much just nails Bernie Sanders as as Rocco the cab mm -hmm. driver. Um, they, mm -hmm. they they totally drop the ball by naming him Rocco, um, <laughs> it's, by giving him an Italian name. But but he he nails that like to the point where I was literally sad when your cab driver changes halfway through the, the act. I you, know you get the scumbag one because I, I miss Josh's uh, Bernie Sanders guy. That was awesome. <laughs> well, that, that's a good segue, actually, to something I wanted to bring up, which was the interesting story progression. You know, it was it's really one of the great pleasures of these Sierra games is they update and upgrade as you go along. I mean, all of a sudden you go from catching one taxi and then all of a sudden something happens and then you're catching a different taxi, but you have to do something in it so that you can progress for the next stage. Or, you know, there's a, there's a homeless guy, but if you poke him and he rolls over and you walk away, he'll come back. I mean, just, just the little things that happen that show you the, the story's moving along. It's, it's never kind of static. If you're doing something, you know it, you know, the game is going to show you. So I know you, you lose the cab driver, but I do, I do enjoy how they do the story progression. No, yeah, that's a great point because they, they keep you they keep you motivated and rewarded in that sense. Mm -hmm. Where it's like you know you, the the first act starts to drag along a little bit. Like I, I found myself mm -hmm. getting not frustrated, but but starting to wonder if I miss something. Like I'm like you know I probably should have I probably should have gotten you know the dress by now. And and mm -hmm. you know just just ten minutes after that initial thought, the cab driver changed. And you're in a messy mm -hmm. cab, and you you look around the clutter on the the seat, and you find a ticket, and blah blah blah. So yeah, but it, it, like mm -hmm. you said, it does a great job of pushing the pushing the game forward. Although they all, I mean, both of the games kind of do that, it, especially when you're over at the museum, and the next thing you know, it's like another fifteen minutes has passed, and you're like, shit, like have I done everything I need to do? Now the time's moving forward. Everybody's moved, and something's different's happening. So you've got that little bit of stress that starts coming down on you later on in the game. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's it's, it's almost a fun, like I'm pretty hard on time time related puzzles, and this one does have does have one time related thing that I really don't like, which would be the the Reaper. Um, or mm -hmm. is he a Reaper running from the hooded man? Um, yeah, yeah. And and even though this is full of spoilers, I guess for the sake of it, I, I won't mention who's who's in the, the cape in case you forgot. <laughs> but but um. So that part's that part's a little maybe that's where the line is like that's a little frustrating, mm -hmm. um, timing wise. Mm -hmm. And obviously there's things like modern machines and and you know can make things a little wonky. But but the rest of the timing stuff is a fun is a good stressful is is a yeah, stress is the wrong word right? It's hard to say. That's kind of an oxymoron. Fun stressful. Um, it's like a fun anxiety. Nope, that's also not a good one. Um, it's it's <laughs> it gets you it gets it gets the heart rate up where where you you finally get the um. You, what, uh, how does it go down? You get the carbon and you rub it on the notepad and you find out the yeah, time. Yeah, you rub it on the notepad. You can, yeah, and then you have to do the safe and then you got to. Yeah, yeah, and you get the times yeah, that, yeah. that Pippin was going to meet these people. And, and yeah. that's the game will progress again. There's, there's only one dead end and that's the sandwich. So so you can you can get to the end of the game whether you do or do not meet with them. Um, mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's really hard. I mean, there's no way you're going to meet all three appointments the first try without a walkthrough. Mm -mm. <laughs> Even yeah. with the walkthrough, it's actually pretty difficult. Um, like, you, yeah, you, you can't dilly dally. Yeah, it's the whole game's kind of like that. It's frustrating. There was a few times I was playing, and I'm like, no, I just don't want to play anymore. Because I'm, I'm like, I'm trying to do it by myself. I'm trying to figure stuff out, and I'm like, man, I don't want to keep walking between these screens. 
Like there was a few yeah. times and then I'm like, oh, I like I overheard all the conversations, but I forgot to talk to everybody. Now I'm like, oh, now am I stuck? But, you know, everybody's gathered, you know, around the museum, but I didn't look at Buddy's necklace. And I'm like, oh, man, I kept forgetting things I was supposed to do partway through. So, you know, I, you end up getting one of those mediocre endings. <laughs> yeah, I didn't I didn't look at the necklace either. I, I completely mm-hmm. had forgotten to do that. Um, it's funny mm-hmm. you say that. But yeah, and for people listening who are like hearing us say it's frustrating, but also hearing us say that we love it, it's because <laughs> it's like it's like old school adventure game fun where the, the yeah. other night, my, my first night playing it, I turned it off. Um, because I, I couldn't remember, uh, just like you, I was trying to get through it without a walkthrough. Uh, really, mm-hmm. I was trying to get through it without universal hints. Because these days, I'm I'm, right. pre- I'm pretty disciplined to where I, I, I'm UHS is as is far as I try to go. I really don't want to do walkthroughs anymore. Um, but I really wanted to do it even without the hints. So I, I turned it off in frustration because I couldn't get down the bloody stairwell mm-hmm. um, because of the light bulb. Um, which yeah, I again, <laughs> It was, it was you, you can go down when they're without the light bulb. I mean, what's your problem, Paul? <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I have a save game called About to Die. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> yeah, it was, which is nice. It was actually, again, it's kind of cathartic to die a nice Roberta Williams staircase death again in a game. Mm-hmm. Um, that was fun. But yeah, I went that to bed good. frustrated because I, I couldn't remember how to get the light bulb. And mm-hmm. I, I, I kind of knew it was from the lamp in, in um, Yvette's office. So I was like, what, mm-hmm. you know, I, I know it's from this lamp, but I can't get it. So I went to bed frustrated. But the reason I say old school adventure frustrating can be good is because you wake up the next day and like after several coffees and whatever, I'm like, oh, I really want to get back in there and figure this out. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, you know, it's, it's that good kind of frustrated where you can't wait to refresh, you know, take a break and come back and figure out what the hell it was you're supposed to do. Um, well, it is, it might it's have, great. Sorry, I'll just say real quick, in my defense, the the lamp, you have to, you look at the lamp and it brings up a little picture of the lamp, but then you have to use the magnifying glass on that to see the light bulb. So that's kind of a dick move. But anyway, sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say, and if you have the light turned on too long, I, I got, I ended up going off and doing something. I came back and it's like, oh, it's too hot to the touch. You just got to like chill for a little bit. I'm like, oh, okay. I mean, it's not right, like super right. straightforward. The game's like thinking about all these little things. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No, good call. Because I, I turned it off, but I only did that because I, I didn't want like a vet to know I was in the office, which that's not yeah. a thing. But yeah, I turned it off for the well, wrong I reason. Well, I did the same too. I mean, I, I closed the safe and I, I I put the painting back and I just, I tried to like clean up after myself and put everything how it was before. I think, I don't even know if you get points for that or not. So Yeah, no, I'm not sure. I'm, cu- I'm kind of curious. Like what happens if you don't close the safe? Because I, I definitely mm-hmm. always do. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, I just it would feel weird to just be like, oh, I'm trying to do everything secretly, but I'm going to leave everything open everywhere I go. That's okay. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't imagine Laura as being that cavalier. No. <laughs> um, but yeah, anyway, it's it's a it's a really really awesome game. I don't know. Dude, before we move into like you know, just I wanted to talk about like some some Easter egg reference things and some fun facts mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Before we move away from our own opinions. Is there, is there anything you want to cover before we do? Uh, mm, no, no, I don't think so. Other than, okay. Yeah. I'll hit this up. I just want to say, I I've got a copy of the uh, dagger of almond Rob big box, uh, right with me. And it is a beautiful big box and something that I had forgotten about it for those that are interested in that sort of thing is one of the spines is pretty and pink, like the back and the other Scots and the other spine is black. And I don't know how many other game boxes are, are like that different on each side. And the reason I was yeah. thinking about that is I, I turned all of my game boxes around so that I could have the side without the UPC code facing out. Cause I realized for ages, I've had them all displayed with the, the uh, code on the side that tells you it's compatibility facing out. So I flipped them all around the other way and then I took a picture and then somebody on Facebook, Chad Armstrong, we've had him on the show before. He's like, oh man, you have a black version of the box. I'm like, it's not black. It must be a reflection of the picture. But I'm like, of course it's black. It's my box. I looked at it. I know that it's black. But I'm like, that's not (laughs) something that I've seen in any of the other games. Have you? No, no, they, they've they've almost always got the same the same spines, right? I think that's the only one where the it's got the black on, you know, where the the two spines are different. Let's just say, like completely different. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which fits because I mean, the back of it has that diagonal divide where it's like this side is black, and it's kind of showing you you've got the light and you've got the dark, and you know, right on the back, it's showing you there's going to be murder. I mean, right. clearly, 
there is going to be murder. <laughs> I like so that. It's good, beautiful it's good box. <laughs> mm-hmm. And in beautiful documentation as well. I mean, th- there's obviously going to be a little bit of copy protection. You know, you have to identify some Egyptian gods, hold tap and all that, which is pretty cool because Egypt's cool to learn about. You can't even really complain about them trying to make you learn stuff. It's like, that. that's fine. It's like you prepared with Gold Rush. You are ready for this game. We're going <laughs> to teach you stuff. But yeah, it's, it's, it's like the brochure. Go ahead. It's it's not like shoehorned in either. Like it it really does kind of fit where to to get the job the, the, um, the, as an, uh, of news reporter for this case, you have to prove that you know enough about Egyptology before being sent into like the lion's den. So it really makes sense. Like mm-hmm. it feels like that would be part of your job interview. Yeah. Like, do you know about this? No. Well, poser. Yeah. Like, oh <laughs> no. I guess you should know the basics about Egyptian gods before you go in on this. That makes sense. It's like uh, Nancy Maple in the Crimson Diamond not knowing about gems, but she's a gemologist. It would just be silly. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a good point. I will mention too the 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 differences between the CD-ROM version and the floppy. That's that's kind of give or take the only difference. Is is the outside of so uh, outside of. Oh, outside of the taxi rides. <laughs> oh, that's right. You had told me about that. We, uh, the, you said the, the taxi rides are a lot longer. On the on the floppy version, he tells his facts, but there's still more ride left at the other end, no matter what you have the speed of. And you know that sometimes they do the quiet taxi rides where they don't say anything. It's also longer, but in the version you get from GOG, which is also supposed to be the larger one, which is like what, 400 and something megabytes. It's the CD-ROM version. It He talks and then it's the second he's done talking, he starts right away the taxi driver. Uh, I mean, the taxi driver starts talking right away and then the ride's over as soon as he's done. And then if he doesn't talk, the ride is only like four seconds. Interesting. Okay. No, I did. Uh, yeah, yeah, I didn't realize that. I've, I've... Like I said before, I played the, the kind of nothing but the floppies until this time, but I didn't re- I didn't notice it necessarily. So yeah, that's a, that's a really good a really good one to point out because what I was going to say the only other one difference would be there's there's no copy protection in the CD ROM because back in the day um, oh. the CD the CD would have yeah. had to have been oh, in the drive. Skip that. Hmm, that makes sense. Because I was like, what did I, I was like, I felt like when I was playing it, the other version, it was a little bit shorter. <laughs> I was trying to figure out what it was, because I'm like, this one's the bigger game, but it was missing that, the little. Right, like, yeah. Oh, yeah, we're, what's huh. his name, Crodfeller, Crod something, yeah. the, the bald guy with the, the sun visor, it gives you the test, yeah. Yeah, so you don't have to yeah. do the test in, this, in the CD-ROM version. And then if you wanted to be really nerdy, you could kind of argue that, that that makes the first death different. But that then mm-hmm. you, you then you'd have to consider failing the copy protection as a death, and it's kind of not; it's more just a fail. No. But yeah, no, that makes sense. And everybody's kind of like cynical too. Like the whole game is kind of like sexist, right? And to me, it's it's historically accurate uh, picture of what the times were like in the 1920s. Like, imagine a female reporter coming into a man's world where they have a men's lounge where they smoke cigars and a men's bathroom because it's it's a men's place. And, and you're just like, you have to be like 10 times stronger of a woman <laughs> to be able yeah. to handle coming into that man's world and have the balls to say, yeah, but you know what? I'm really good at sussing out stuff too. And I mean, she's having to defend who she is and her intelligence all the way throughout the game, which kind of puts me as the player on a heightened sense of, oh my God, what did I just do? I don't want to look like an idiot. Everybody out there is trying to prove that I suck. (laughs) And I I just want to prove to them that I don't suck. So, oh crap, I touched this. I got dust on my hands. Now I'm getting fingerprints on crime scenes or, oh my God, did I accidentally break something? Do I restore the game? Because I'm going to look like an idiot. Nobody's saying anything. Right, so right. what do I do is when are they going to say something? <laughs> <laughs> is it the game lets you make these stupid mistakes? It's like, there's a cliff, go ahead, walk off of it then, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, it's a good, it's a really good point too. Cause I mean, playing it, it as, as, as a, as a male, I, I, I can almost, you know, walk a, a mile in the shoes kind of thing where you can really feel to, to a, a probably a lesser extent of what it's like nowadays to be a female, but still obviously, unfortunately is a little bit there. Um, but mm-hmm. it, especially just it role playing as a woman in the twenties, you know, as, as a journalist trying to be, you know, who, who's smart and intelligent and independent and all the, all the good traits. Um, but it's just constantly having to put up with just 
gross comments and and bullshit and and, and constantly having mm-hmm. to reprove herself no matter how many times she's she's correct it, it really makes you feel it makes you feel like a woman in the 20s because everybody's mm-hmm. just doubting you and talking down to you or hitting on you inappropriately and um, <laughs> yeah yeah I, I saw some criticisms of the people calling the game sexist and I, I just it, to to a degree I guess it's not really my call to make but I just felt like those criticizing it were missing the point that the point was yeah this is how it was in the twenties and, 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 and exactly, <laughs> it really was. Like, you know, to, exactly <laughs> to be a woman in a professional. Yeah. So they, they did an mm-hmm. awesome job of making you feel, you know, where she, she had to really take it on the chin to a degree, but she does a great job of firing back very, I don't want to say passively, but you know, professionally, you know, like she doesn't take mm-hmm. any crap, but she doesn't lash out. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, she just, you know, takes her notes and does her thing and and she just knows the only way she can prove herself is by doing her job properly, which is clearly not stopping murders. She's a reporter, as we've mentioned with the other game when we talked about Colonel's Bequest, but she's very good at looking, seeing, writing, cataloging and paying attention, which in the end turns out to be pretty important. Yeah, yeah, and she doesn't doesn't let the the males like walk all over her, you know, she doesn't mm-hmm. lash out because then she'd lose her job, but she does a good job yeah. of standing her ground, I guess you could say. So mm-hmm. it's, yeah, it's, it's really, really well done. And then I guess I could bring us a little bit into the uh, controversies of, of the game because there's, you know, there's a lot of the stereotype stuff and obviously we're heading into low fat territory. <laughs> yeah, no, this is, this, this is sketchy territory. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Let's, yeah. Let's, yeah. Let's, let's, get out, let's get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's, let's bloody move on. Let's get out of here. Um, okay, I'll, I'll move us on. I'll say um, back to what you were saying about the cab rides, that it was really fun that they gave you little historical um, information like the cabbie would, would talk about. Oh, here's a good one, that he recently had that young Asimov kid in his car. He's always eating candy and, and making the seats all sticky, but he's a smart kid. And that's pretty fun, <laughs> right? Because Asimov's parents did, did own a candy shop in New York. And you know that's something that... Mm-hmm. that could have would have happened uh in that time so that was fun yeah and i like it how they they kind of use the facts to cover up the fact that you can't have any conversation on your whim with the cab driver he's like i don't care i don't want to talk about it and i don't want to talk to you by the way have you heard of lewis carroll yeah Yeah, yeah, he's uh, it was another one. Al Jolson, he's, he's making into some movie called The Jazz Singer. It's supposed to have voices in it. It'll never replace radio. Stuff like that was a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it put you into the time period. I've mentioned it before. I'll mention it again. If you primed up with loving facts and adventure games that were subtly given to you with Gold Rush, this is the next game for your library, certainly, because it, it's even more subtle and fun. And it puts facts bloody everywhere. Like, and I mean, you're in a museum, so you can imagine you can be learning about dinosaurs and knights and historical stuff and and works of art and just so many different things it's going to be subtly teaching you without you knowing it but the next thing you know you'll be at a party you'll be popping off facts you'll be like super popular yeah, yeah. This game. <laughs> yeah that was that was a leap right there yeah <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it's 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 one of those games too if, you, if you're playing or if you want to replay it like like slow down stop and, and appreciate the flavor text appreciate just looking yeah. at stuff that you know isn't gonna forward your progression just to appreciate it like there's a weird mm-hmm. a weird tiny little screen where you go down the hallway in the armory in the medieval uh display i mm-hmm. guess you could say exhibit and and just above the door there's there's like six flags and they're just plain colors but if you click look on them, they, they all have their own description and it's not just a blue flag. It's, it's the blue flag of Arthur, but you know, I don't remember. Um, but Mm -hmm. it's, it's really cool. Like, like literal background art has its own Mm -hmm. unique descriptions and stuff. So it's worth, yeah, it's worth checking out Mm -hmm. when you go through it. But, um, oh, sorry. So back on, on the, the topic of, um, sneaking in real facts and stuff, I thought it was cool. Um, that Pippin Carter is, is basically Howard Carter. Right. That's, that was pretty mm-hmm. cool. Mm-hmm. Like it, they, mm-hmm. they kind of took Howard Carter and changed his name to Pippin. And, and so Howard Carter is, is the man credited with discovering the tomb uh, of Tutankhamun, right. They, who, mm-hmm. um, you know, basically found that. So they, they just kind of made Pippin Howard Carter, uh, but they also made him a, just a pompous, just, just the worst guy. And um, yeah, 
His I, I death was, suited everything about the character, didn't it? It was just perfect. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it was so appropriate he was the first to die because it's like he, mm-hmm. he was just a dick to everybody in the worst kind of ways. He'd exactly. Be like, yeah, he'd be the mm-hmm. first one. Um, and I tried to – I was digging up a little info on, on Howard Carter just to see how relate, related they were. And I I, I don't know. I, I – I couldn't find really anything negative on Howard Carter. Like the like Google didn't respond well to is Howard Carter a dick um, or mm-hmm. you know, things like that. Like I couldn't, I couldn't find anything on like personality. It seemed like if anything, high society looked down upon him because he had kind of, you know, commoner background and didn't go to university and things like that. So he wasn't really um, even after his, his find, he wasn't accepted into like the well-off circles and was never, um, recognized you know never knighted never anything like that that you might expect from a from a brit so yeah i'm mm-hmm. not i'm not sure that howard was actually the, quite the arrogant you know little whatever that pippin <laughs> was but <laughs> well to you know make that kind of discovery and do that kind of work maybe you kind of have to be at least a little bit yeah perhaps exactly mm-hmm. but and, yeah i know from what i read he, he was he was out there for like 30 years before he wow. went like, like yeah just looking that's hardcore like, and the uh, some some lord, I believe in England, was was paying um, was paying for his his um, expositions or whatever you call them, and he mm-hmm. cut him off after after thirty years. He's like, I'm not, I'm done. I'm not paying you anymore to do this. And Howard Carter said, just one more, please, just one more. Oh. And that was that was wow. the one where he found Tut. So that was super. Oh, wow, cool. I'm so close, man. Just give me one more. Imagine you dedicating your whole life to dying like yeah. that. Yeah, and he found it in the end. So yeah, that was fun. And then the other thing I'll mention too, um, kind of on the the nerdier side, uh, but back to the game and, and Sierra side of things was Ralph Pulitzer um, of of the you know of the family. Um, Pulitzer mm-hmm. was supposed to be was supposed to be more in the game. Like he's basically he's in a screen standing next to either your boss or the or. Uh, I, th- I, th- I think it's your boss. Doesn't matter. He's he's he's. I think he's just a sprite standing there. I'm not even sure you'd know who he was. But thanks to the the many nerds like us, and thanks to Phil Fortier's SCI companion, people had found um, a talkie animation for Ralph Pulitzer. So he was supposed to oh. have had a bigger role than he did. Um, it just never made it in the game. Oh, is that just like from right in the first when you're off in the office at the at the news place? You mean? No, so be at the kind of at the very end. I'm not to be honest. Oh, I'm not. Okay. I'm not exactly sure where his sprite that is in the game is, but I think it's if you do if you get the good ending, um, it's you're mm-hmm. told that that your boss is gonna um, what do you call it? I, I, elect you, not elect. Uh, is gonna recommend you for a Pulitzer surprise. Mm-hmm, for a, yeah, <laughs> so, surprise a Pulitzer prize. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so I'm guessing that that they maybe at one point had it, so she was gonna actually maybe get the prize and, and Ralph mm-hmm. would have been the one that gives it to her, I'm guessing. But yeah, anyway, oh. long story mm-hmm. short, we'll kind of never know, but, but he did have his own little talkie frame and, and art done, but it was never used. Interesting. Hmm. Yeah. There's definitely a, a dearth of characters. I mean, going right back, heavy spoiler here, like super spoiler, massive spoiler. So feel free to mute it for a few secs if you haven't played it, but pretty much low fat gives you the, the tip of what's going on right at the beginning of the game. Cause if you talk to him about everybody and you talk to him about O'Reilly and you're like, Oh, what's up with this guy? He's like, Oh man, he's dirty. Cop. No matter how many times I wash his clothes. He, oh, I shouldn't have done an accent. No matter how many times I wash his clothes, he's never clean. And uh, right away, I mean, if you're taking notes on the characters, you're going to write dirty cop. And I mean, you don't even realize until later how heavily he's integrated into like every little bit of it. But like essentially, right, this guy at the beginning of the game is telling you everything that's up if you're paying attention. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a good catch. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. And that, that was right in front of my face, too. And I, I really didn't think much of it. Like I just took it as just gossip from 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 that guy. Um, but you you obviously read between the lines and you're right. It's kind of it's. Mm-hmm prophetically correct <laughs> well on one of my last playthroughs uh my husband was sitting next to me and, and we were talking about it and he's like some of this seems silly because he he pulled up a, a walkthrough online and was sort of reading what i was doing <laughs> and he's like walk across street walk across street twice pick up newspaper pick up newspaper three times he's like why'd you have to pick it up three times I'm like, well, technically you don't. You have to you have to click on it. You have to look at it and then it'll bring it up. You got to click it again to open it. You got to click it again to see the 
the coupon, but then you got to click the coupon to pick up the coupon. So technically it's, it's a progression, but if you just look at it in a walkthrough, it looks really dumb. And it does. If you read a walkthrough for this game, it looks so stupid. Pick up bone, like find passage, get light bulb. It's, it's not that lame. And there is, you really have to have the time to sit and think and look and concentrate. There is so much dialogue and it's, it's really, really text heavy, which I find is, is such a, nice thing to come across games of that age were really good at that yeah yeah it really is it is there's there's one i think it's the sierra help walkthroughs are they they kind of reduce entire games down to like one paragraph so like they they just cut all the crap and they're just like do this do that walk over there pick that up do that and it's just like if that was i imagine like that that's probably what james was looking at because that that really just takes all the the magic and fun out of it when you see it reduced down to a few (laughs) paragraphs it's probably it you know it usually comes up first but i you know i'd like to say that they're good and i i super appreciate everybody that's put the uh the help stuff up there but i find it's often missing one step here and there which is really crucial in a game it'll be like but you don't have to you, you only have to talk about this one thing to this one person and don't worry about the rest. But then you find out you needed to talk about more than just that one thing. So it's like, it's cut down so to the nitty gritty that if you follow it entirely, you're going to miss huge sections of the game. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, and and it's just so many Sierra games, this one being a prime example, just, just aren't meant for that type of gameplay. Like there's just so much, there's so much craft that you miss by, by just playing the Mm -hmm. story. You know, there's just, the, the, mm-hmm. it, you lose all the immersion and all the, just all the fun facts or potential funny lines. And yeah, this is a really good candidate for, for just exploring the world you're in and taking it all in, taking your time. Like if, mm-hmm. you, if, you're, if you're in a rush or if, if you've got the mentality of like, I'm in this game to beat it, it might not even be that fun because it's, it's just, mm-hmm. uh, to me, it's not the kind of game you fire up to beat. It's the kind of game you fire up to experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very much so. And and if you just follow something straight through and get to the end, you still might not get it right. Because you know what? You might have missed something and the option that your walkthrough is telling you to click might not be there because yeah. you might not know what's going on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Because it, it's the game is like that. It verifies. It's like you don't know what you don't know. So like try telling me something. If you don't know it, the option's just not going to be there. We're not, we're not going to mess around here. You don't know that. You can't make it up. Not at this point. You can't come in now and say that. No, absolutely not. Start over. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'll put. Um, <clears throat> all right, I've got, I've got some, some kind of Easter egg reference things to go over really quickly. But before I do, I've got one last like fun fact sort of thing um, that didn't really fit anywhere. And that's just that the archaeologist song, right, which which uh, we've, hmm. we've discussed kind of recently. Um, I had no idea about this. Um, and, and thank you to, to Charles for, for pointing this out to me um, and actually giving me a, a, quite a lot of like fun behind the scenes facts uh, for me. But he pointed out that the archaeologist song is based on the song Lighthouse Keeper by Erica Egan. And hmm. you can find it. It was on the Clockwork Orange soundtrack. Oh, nice. And it's, um, mm-hmm. it's, it's not, you're not going to listen to Lighthouse Keeper and be like, oh, that's the archaeologist song. Cause it's like mm-hmm. the archaeologist song has its own, its own feel. It's, it's, it's original enough, but it's, you, it's definitely based on Lighthouse Keeper. <laughs> it, it's, it's a, it's a really good way of, of taking inspiration without ripping it off. I'll put it that way. Um, but if I'm, you, if you like the song, check it out. I'm really glad you brought that up. I actually wanted to say if when I was playing the floppy version, the non-talky version, I was surprised because boom, there she was singing. I, I almost had forgotten. Of course, she sang in every version that I've played, but I might have only had PC speakers the first time. I don't know. But I was pleasantly surprised to see that she was singing in both versions. Yeah, that is nice. I'm sure of, of the, the seven or so floppy disks, one of them is there just to hold that song. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Took a whole mega bite. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you've got some Easter eggs for me. You know, I'd like to hear that. I, I haven't even looked into any actual Easter eggs in this game outside of references. I've seen a lot of references. Yeah, and I, you know, now I, I feel super weird about calling anything Easter egg just since we did that episode, like we did it to ourselves. <laughs> oh yeah, because um, there's still Easter eggs too, even though they're like references is, isn't even a thing. I had to backtrack. I think it is more Easter eggs. Anyways, whatever you have, it's what it it's uh, what I'm talking about. 
Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, it's both and, and neither. I, I'm not going to take a side. These are these are whatever you want them to be, but they're they're things. Um, so <laughs> we've got um, so there's, there's a Gabriel Knight uh, Easter egg, but this one's in Gabriel Knight one. Um, and this one's probably, I have it at the top of the list because, oh no, I did write the full thing. Thank God. Okay. So at the university, if you, uh, so again, in Gabriel Knight, um, at the university, uh, there's a bulletin board and on the bulletin board, it notes that there's a conference with Laura Bo Dorian, uh, that's going to happen there. And I thought that was the most mm. significant because I guess since, since Gabriel Knight's obviously a Sierra game that kind of, um, makes it canon that Laura mm -hmm. marries, marries Steve. That's beautiful. Yeah. I thought that was pretty mm. cool. Right. Cause the, the game ends by saying that, that they, they date mm -hmm. each other. Um, yeah. So the, the game doesn't, doesn't it might end that. saying that you date each other. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Unless you put all the crimes on him. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so that, that was kind of cool. So I guess Gabriel Knight kind of makes, makes it canon that, that Laura Bo does marry mm -hmm. Steve. So there, there's that since we never got a third one. Um, no. And, and just sort of related, I will say too, that Jane Jensen does have a small speaking role of in, mm -hmm. in, Dagger of Amon Ra. Um, Jane Jensen being the, the writer, you know, creator of the Gabriel Knight series, she's the voice of the flapper girl who, uh, you mm -hmm. know, just, just is super thirsty for Laura. Um, so yeah, <laughs> that, that, that's, that's Jane Jensen, which is pretty cool. And her husband, Robert Holmes, is writing man. Mm, writing I didn't man. know that. Yeah, I don't know who wrote that. Um, oh. Scott Murphy, fun fact, of the uh, two guys is credited as miscellaneous people. So you can hear him just just muttering at some point about you know something. Um, but anyway, so back to the Easter eggs. Um, so yeah, the Gabriel Knight. That's probably the most interesting one again because of the canon thing. Um, Low Fat says to Lara Bo that the the clothes will be ready next Tuesday, and then he says just kidding, and that could be a reference to Freddie Farkas because Freddie Farkas has the, the same exact line where. Um, uh, the other characters say to Freddie when he tries to claim his old boots that they won't be there till next Tuesday. So just a little. Oh, nice possible. nod. Yeah, nice nod. Yeah. Here's here's a not so nice nod. <laughs> this is one they should have. Really, <laughs> they really should have just let this go. But apparently, Low Fat uh, is the cousin of Hop Singh in Freddy Farkas. Um, so oh, yeah, again, of probably, probably yeah. should have just let it go. But but alas, you know, I'm just reading facts here. Um, <laughs> So that, that was kind of cool. Um, this next one is probably the only one I noticed, um, which would be the crowd feller again at, at the, at the newspaper, bald guy, sun visor, um, does that typical Sierra thing where they say the, the protagonist name wrong, um, as mm -hmm. probably yes, you know, that Larry one. more than anything. Yeah. Um, and he says, Oh, you're, you're Laura Baines. Um, yeah, exactly. Which, you know, you're like, uh, Oh man. Yeah, that's right. You're like, Jesse's my, uh, cousin. <laughs> yeah so that was that was fun little little police quest one and then I've, mm -hmm. I've only got a few more at least written down there, there was there was more i didn't write down uh or more appropriately copy and paste but um mm -hmm. here's three king's quest ones right so it's a roberta williams um game uh, maybe asterisk mark but nonetheless and so there's king's there's a lot of king's quest ones in there so the, the i think the most fun is um in the hall of the great masters like the 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 room with all the the paintings the art um, one mm -hmm. of the paintings is of King Graham being tortured by skele skeletons in hell. <laughs> so that's kind of cool. Beautiful, yep. Mm -hmm. um, if you examine the skeleton key, Larabo surmises that it might be it might open Pandora's box, which yeah, could, <laughs> it's probably nice a King's Rosella Quest reference. Yeah. yeah, very nice, exactly. very nice. And then the, there was again there was like five or six of these, but they got weaker as the list went on. So I omitted mm -hmm. a bunch of them. So here's the last one I thought was at least somewhat interesting. When the King Cobras are discovered in the tunnels, it's possible to interact with them and get a King's Quest reference where the narrator basically just says, this this ain't King's Quest, Lara. Oh. <laughs> and the last one I've got is from Freddie Farkas. Um, a, a, again, a bunch of Freddie connections here because it's Josh Mandel, uh, his, his other game that he co-wrote. And it's um, basically, uh, if you look at the little papers sticking on the wall in the general store, um, you'll find uh, a notice that says one ferret brown and white answers to the name of Daisy enjoys sniffing out dead bodies. If found, please return to Dr. Olympia Miklos care of the lion Decker museum in New York. <laughs> so that's oh, cute. <laughs> yeah. That's cute. 
I, mean, I, I like the little fun text. Josh Mandel is just such a great voice actor and creative writer. A game like uh, like this or Freddie Farkas obviously would could never have been anything as cool as they were without him. Yeah, exactly. No, I'm I'm, I'm a, a huge Mandel fan. I, I want to say mm-hmm. even more so now. I've, I've I've always appreciated his humor. I've always respected him for for what he's done vaguely because I only kind of knew what he vaguely did because he just he he seemed to have had his hands in in minor roles in a lot of Sierra stuff but yes I, I didn't know that he co-wrote Dagger of Amon Ra until Mm-mm. this week and mm-hmm. I had only played Freddie Farkas a, a couple months ago so the culmination of those two games they're, they're just they're amazing so yeah I'm kind of kind of immediately a huge fan of him and and his Bernie Sanders voice I knew it was Josh because because mm-hmm. I was like, there's that, that's that's there's, that's a Jewish guy doing this voice. I mean, it, it's it's that good. I mean, there's no way you, like you have to have the Hebrew in your blood to do it that good. Again, I, I'm, oh, I'm yeah. Jewish. I'm allowed, to, I'm allowed to say this stuff. People don't get upset. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, okay, so to, to wrap the episode up because this is going much longer than we thought it would. Um, I've got three little last things. Two of them are really quick. One, I didn't know this and this, uh, this fits for either Lara Bow game, but I didn't know that, that her name was kind of a pun or a play on Clara Bow, who was a mm. s- uh, star of silent films and early talkie films. And I, you, I guess you could say her likeness too. Cause she, yeah, I guess so. She definitely rocked like a shorter curly hairdo sort of thing. So you could maybe see that, but if you're just <laughs> also now learning this, just Google Clara Bow cause that's fun. And then the other thing is that the cover of this game which I think Anna you'd agree is is probably the best, if not among the very best box art, big box mm-hmm. art game just ever. The cover of this game is just phenomenal, um, mm-hmm. and that was based on um, the Saturday Evening Post um, issue. Would be uh, I didn't write this down. This is from memory. Issue was March eighteenth, nineteen oh five. I am confident. I thought, yeah, I thought it was nineteen oh six, but it could be nineteen oh five because I I change things in my memory. I'm look. <laughs> I got this. Hang on. I, I have your Hebrew version right here. <laughs> yeah. It was 1905. March. Looks like March 18th, something like that. 1905. Yeah. Awesome. And that, that may or may not be the thumbnail for this. We're not, I'm not sure, but, but if it's not, you just, you could Google Saturday evening post March 18th, 1905. It'll pull up right away. Just go to their website and it's right there. And it's, it's pretty cool. It's, um, yeah, like the cover of the game isn't like a, a, a depiction of it, but it's again, kind of like I said, with the archaeologist lighthouse keeper song, it's, it's a, it, you can tell it's inspired by it. Yeah. It's, it's her pose. It's the way she's looking at the, at so many things about it. It's just, uh, you know, the hands aren't exactly in the same position, but there's a lot of elements that are quite the same. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's pretty cool. Um, okay. And then the very last thing is kind of just a surprise question for you because I, I have a great answer. So I decided <laughs> instead of just saying my, my awesome answer to put you on the spot, bring you down with me, but you're unprepared. Um, so that's fun for me. Um, just for fun, who would you pick to play Laura Bo in a movie? Ooh. Oh, that's a <laughs> on this one. I don't know. I think it'd be kind of wild to have somebody like uh, Angelina Jolie <laughs> doing her. I like. I think that she would be non-traditional and doing up her hair and everything. She would be pretty snazzy for that role. Is that crazy? Do you think I'm crazy? No, I could see that. Yeah, that's not. That's really not bad because I mean, it's, yeah, kind mm-hmm. of like a like a rounder face, like full lips. I, I could see that. Hmm. Yeah, I think she could play it up well with the murder and the mystery, but she's also tough and she can handle all the deaths and all this crazy stuff ha- happening around her. So, yeah, that that's totally my pick. Okay. Okay. And then mine um, is uh, is uh, Rachel Weitz from hmm. specifically from the Mummy, at which I, I just now I'm realizing the irony there. Um, yeah, <laughs> the Egyptian thing, but if you if you look up a picture of of of, Ra- of Rachel fights from the Mummy, it, like mm-hmm. with the, the curly short hair, like it 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 looks exactly like Lara Bow, uh, but without pixels. Yeah, if you're actually going for looks, her she makes more sense than mine because I was I was not really going for looks as more as like an air about her and a personality. So oh, yeah, okay. in looks you, you totally you, you've got a good one here. I'm just looking at pictures. Wow, yeah, good choice. And you could always cheat. Oh, and her and, eyes. Right? 
I don't know what it is. Like, it's it's amazing how much she looks like a pixelized, you know, woman. <laughs> like, oh, my God. I'm going to send you this picture right here. And I'm just like, oh, my God, this is exactly it. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Nobody yeah. can see this. So you can totally edit that out. But <laughs> yeah, keep like, it yeah. in. Frustrate them, you know? <laughs> 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 don't don't google it if you're like driving or whatever but yeah no it's 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 crazy how much it looks like it or she she could mm-hmm. be it i guess i should say yeah and i don't know i'm saying i'm saying rachel rachel Vites. i i think that's the right way to say it i i can imagine the, like a more north american might might be wise instead of Vites, but mm-hmm. uh, doesn't doesn't matter the, the girl from the mummy that's we had you there. So, all right, that, that that's good stuff. I mean, you could always have cheated and just said Clara Bow. That would have been an acceptable answer too, since she's probably based off her, but <laughs> yeah, I guess that that would have been, I know, you know, me, I never take an easy answer. I'll always give a strange one or I mean a, another good one. So. All right. Um, you got any, any closing thoughts? Uh, yeah. It was a really neat experience to play the game again for this show today. Not only was I taking my usual notes that, you know, on every conversation and anytime I think something's interesting, I was taking screenshots whenever it's giving you codes and numbers, but I was taking notes for this episode and it it really was another layer to it. Like, I think I enjoyed the game before, but now I feel like I enjoy it even more knowing sort of what's going on and paying a different kind of attention to it. I I highly recommend if you haven't played it to give it a try and try your best not to use any walkthroughs or anything else. Don't worry so much. As long as you don't muck up with the sub, (laughs) you should be fine. Just save lots and die lots and get through it as best you can because it's worth it. Even, even the crappy ending is satisfying and a little funny. I mean, the crappy endings. I don't know how many you can get, like seven different ones. And, and, and it's it's literally asking you who did it and how are they motivated? And like, who helped who? And like, who was the mastermind behind that? And it literally it goes, it is the whole chapter. They're just asking you, you've got this list with like all the choices of everything you know on it. So it's, it seems... I'm trying to make it sound better or worse. But to me, this all sounds yeah. amazing. I have my arms in the air and I'm expressing to you how cool this game is. So just go play it. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's, that's really well put. I would say the same thing. It's, it's, it's an easy game to just completely f- like fall in love with. Basically it's, 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 it's 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 got everything. It's got you got your the murder mystery, the the investigation. You feel like you're the character, like 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 I said earlier. I mean, I genuinely felt what it might have been like to have been like a woman in the twenties. That that was kind of the power of 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 this game. Um, mm-hmm. And I guess I could add too is is even with the spoilers that that you potentially probably didn't skip ahead for or anything like that. It's we still didn't really spoil it because there isn't, there isn't the one guy who did the thing, you know, there's, there's a mm-hmm. lot of moving parts and, and, and it's not, it was, I thought it was done really well. It's, it's weird because uh, I saw one of the biggest critiques of this game I saw was from adventure gamers. They gave it a 2.5 out of five. And the reason was sloppy storytelling. And, and I just, I couldn't mm. really disagree more because it, the, the way they intertwined the characters, the, there, there was, there was believable motives between the mm-hmm. different things that were going on and, and the feuds between the characters. And, and it just, it had a lot of complexity beyond, you know, just, just one angry guy who's you know running amok in the museum, killing everybody. It was, it was a lot more complex than that. And uh, yeah, it, it's, it's just really cool. It's, it's a fun, immersive experience. It's, it's old school in the sense that you could take your own notes if you want to and, and get even more gratification, but you obviously don't have to. I mean, I, I mm-hmm. didn't, I haven't in years and it's still enjoyable, mm-hmm. but yeah, go, go bloody play. Like I, like I said before, this is, this is my, my one of three Sierra games that, that I try and push on, on, uh, the, the Lucas players who, who don't play Sierra games. Like if you're, if you're going to play a Sierra game, I, I would say this one or Gabriel Knight would probably be, probably be the way to go. Mm-hmm. And in Space Quest too, but I can't ever decide on which one to tell them. Like I want to say three, but they probably won't put up with parsers, and and then my other one's five, but it, you know, not it doesn't matter. Um, mm-hmm. we're, we're we're all done. Let's let's. Let you, it... you, we're gonna read an email. Are you gonna read an email? Email. Sort of, yeah. Um, <clears throat> more so. I'm just just gonna give a quick shout out, basically, to to Chris Baker okay. and his project, which is. Um, <clears throat> sorry, let me do that again. My voice was. <clears throat> Jesus. 
Yeah, I'm just going to do a quick shout out more so than, than read the email, but I uh, just wanted to shout out to Chris Baker, um, listener of the show who wrote in a, a very kind letter saying he's working on a game. Um, he's, he's writing on behalf of Little Night Games and they're making um, Mira the Legend of the Jins, which I hope I'm saying right. Um, I think I am. But um, it's a it's a 2D game called Mirror Legend of the Jinns. Um, it's based on inspired by Moroccan and Amazing folklore, which it's weird. I had a hard time with folklore of all those words. But um, it's um, it's a beautiful game. Just just in, uh, like literally a drop dead gorgeous 2D game. Um, it's on Kickstarter right now. By the time you lot are hearing this, it's the final day. Um, and it does need more to reach its goal. So there is still time to hop on Kickstarter and check it out. Um, and again, just, just this, this person's a, a listener and they asked us to, and, you know, we want to support obviously indie devs and, and anything for a listener kind of deal. So just a shout out to them. It's a gorgeous game. So go to Kickstarter and search for um, Mirror, uh, M-I-R-A. Um, Legend of the Jinns, D J I N N S, and you can find it on mm-hmm. there. So yeah, just check it out. It's a beautiful game. Again, uh, you're hearing this on Tuesday. This is the last day that it's on Kickstarter, and it's it's a little bit short right now. So if you're inspired by its art and the idea of the game, maybe consider backing it. But otherwise, mm-hmm. you can do all the other things I yell at you to do, which is you know join the discussion and community we're a page or a group we're on facebook you could check us out on instagram at cgg podcast um we're also on twitter at cgg podcast do us a tweet there if you like say hello um uh email is mail at classic gamers guild.com huge thank you to all of our patreons really appreciate and love you guys thank you for helping us uh cover hosting fees and just supporting us in general um if you want to become a patreon supporter you you, you can you just you need your you need your you got to be eighteen years old or older to have your parents' permission. <laughs> just just get that three digit security card from them, um, mm-hmm. security code, whatever. Just go to Patreon and and you know th- throw us one to to thousands of dollars if you want to. No big deal. Mm-hmm. Um, huge thank you to those in our extra special thanks tier, um, which would be Una and Gus. Jay Holmes and Mark Fillion. Um, check out Mark's game Chinatown Detective Agency on Steam. You can wishlist it and check out the demo. It's amazing. And um, if you want to say hi to myself or Anna, you could probably find Anna most most of the time on Facebook. would be the best place to reach her. Um, so you could say hello to her there in the Classic Gamers Guild. If you'd like to reach out to to me for some reason, um, you can find me at Phantom Fellows on Twitter. That'd be the best place to find me there. And yeah, other other podcasts usually say that, so we're gonna start saying that now. You know, it's it's an olive branch, so you could you could you, you could say hi. You don't have to. Or just you could just yell it back to this recording right now if you want. That'll do. But um, but if you do say hi, you know we're we're here. We're here for you. So that's it. You know, buddy, go play this game. It's on GOG. It's maybe on Steam. Don't do murder.